pressing play. Welcome to Another Trek. Trek. This is our first episode of 50 Shades of Trek, and we have just hit play on the Voyager episode Counterpoint. I am Isaac. I am joined by my co-host, Andrew Hogan. Hello, Andrew. Hello, Cobra. Hello. And we have also got on the line Mark Cartier from the Shuttle Pod Show. How are you, Mark? Hello. I'm good. That's good. So we've gotten straight into the action on this one. So this, um, to explain what we're doing, though, we're doing a live rewatch. So you, um, we've explained in the intro, but you can watch the episode along with us, like a DVD audio commentary from 20 years ago, or you can just listen to us in the car or on a run, at the gym, walking by the beach, or while you're ignoring your significant other at a caf cafe or restaurant. That's how people listen to us, I'm sure. That's, That's where I listen, listen to your podcast. <laughs> Fancy Does restaurant. Surrounded by interesting <laughs> people. I'm like, I'm listening to a podcast, damn it. <laughs> so what I've done is I've developed a list of the 50 sexiest episodes of Trek, and we're going to count them from 50 to 1 over the next 50 weeks of unplanned Trek content. And this episode has come in at number 50. Now, I must admit, I did. I woke up really early one day and developed this list. It was like 3 a.m. And I used a lot of Google to help me out. <laughs> I can't necessarily decide why I had this episode on the list. But before we joined on, um, Mark, Mark's reaction to this episode was, oh, it's that one. So at least one of us knows what we're about to watch today. <laughs> All yeah, I know it's about the guy. it. It's the guy from Election, which is one of my favorite movies ever made. Is it a Christmas movie? I can't remember Election. What happens in it? Election is, it's got Reese Witherspoon and, um, oh, crap. What's his face? Um, oh, shoot. The oh, guy, the guy. The movie, the movie guy. The movie guy. Anyway, uh, oh, Reese Witherspoon is like a high school senior and she's uh, running for uh, class president. For some right. Time. It's directed by Alexander Payne, who's one of my favorite directors. Uh, and what happens is, um, uh, oh, Matthew Broadwick. There we go. Matthew Broadwick. Oh, right. That guy. Yeah. Really? He plays a, a high school teacher. Uh, and his, his best friend, uh, Mark Herlick, who is the guy in this episode who plays the alien who's constantly stopping the Voyager yeah. to do inspections. Um, oh, yes. He plays the math teacher at this high school and uh, he and Reese Witherspoon, the catalyst of the movie is that um, he has had a sexual relationship with Reese Witherspoon when she was a, like a sophomore or something. Ooh. And he gets fired. And now she's running for a class president election and Matthew Broderick doesn't want her to win. So it's about this teacher trying to sabotage this, you know, high school students election uh, opportunity. It's a, it's an amazing movie. I'm really... <laughs> The, yeah. the most important thing is, of course, that Matthew Broderick's best friend ends mm -hmm. up in the Enterprise. Well, he ends up in on on Voyager. Mm -hmm. Anyway, no. Well, his best friend Cameron from Ferris Bueller's Day Off. Yeah, he's he's um oh. captain of the Enterprise. Arthur, he's the captain of the B. That's right. Of the B. The big B. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, Connecting all the, the dots. B. And everyone's getting installed next Tuesday. Yeah. Which is like you know. Weird, and also, he lived his entire life thinking that he's responsible for killing Jim Kirk, which is like pretty dodgy. Hey, look, it's the lineup that they had when Neelix left Voyager in season seven. Okay, I better actually start watching this. <laughs> what's this? What's this? Oh, thing? and I've, I've, when I've, I've, press, I've, when I've given play guys. I've given there was. Some You've given I've, up, all right. I've given up we're, the skin thing. I'm bored of that. Yeah, uh, we're watching at a point, and we're a bit over four minutes in. Exactly. Yeah. And it's very um, <laughs> so I've, I've mentioned that people are able to tweet us in while we're watching this, and Antipodal has done that. She's given us the, the Vulcan salute and a couple of nice emojis, so I think she's watching along with us today. Hello, Kelly. Yes, hello. Oh, yeah, hello. Can we just say hello to him? Oh, hey, Shins. Hi. Fucking hi. Fucking Shins is here. Shins is here, too. Fucking Shins is turned up. And I'm pissing on now, you, you, you bloody bastards. Look at you, your fucking ugly head. That's terrible. Oh, my God. You look like the back of my ass. Don't really know who you're talking to there, Shins, but um, 
Happy New Year. No, it was talking to you, mate. Oh, thanks, mate. Yeah. <laughs> uh, fifth season Voyager. Okay, right. It looks like the kind of um, scanner that they used. The, what was the name of that 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 race that had the phage and got sick all the time? And did, oh yeah, the, did, the 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 scanner that they're using on on the crew and the mess hall looked a lot like that. Oh, we've got barrels here, so at least Wharf's not there to to potentially die. But it's obviously an unsafe workplace. Yeah, clearly. I think that one of these security uh, guys is uh, one of the alien authority investigator guys. I yes. think he was on Battlestar Galactica. I think he was the Ooh. an executive officer on the uh, other ship. Hmm. The, oh, the, on, on the, um, yeah, the, on the Pegasus, the, the, yeah. The, the Pegasus, yes. Everything happens on the Pegasus, doesn't it? And of course... Pegasus was captained by Ensign Rowe. Did we find that out? In yeah, that's right. Yes, oh. it was. <laughs> Michelle Forbes. Yeah. I just watched uh, Ensign Rowe uh, today before I got on the call with you. That's oh, the right. generation episode that ended. The Vidians. The, that's it, the Vidians. The is, Vidians is that the have the phage. Is yeah. Ensign Rowe the episode where she has to take off her jewellery but walks allowed to wear his sash? Yeah. Yeah, that one. <laughs> yeah, because Riker didn't like her earring. Yeah, he didn't like her. He likes Worf. He, and well, both of them. He liked her in the episode where they lost their memory, remember? Yeah, he liked her a lot that time. He liked her a few times, I think, from memory. That, that yeah. one might be on this list of in Fifty Shades. Oh, absolutely. Not what I've got to sound. Reach to All set here, Captain. Patterson, Oh, can you mute that, Hogan? Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, do you want to give me a rough idea of how many minutes you're in? Yeah, roughly seven. We've got Janeway um, in her ready room with one of the people with a real futuristic laptop at the moment. He's playing. Uh, I think he might be playing Hearts or. Um, well, he's on her laptop. Yeah. It's pretty pretty futuristic. It, yeah, it, it's it, her it's uh, cool. pea green laptop. Yeah. Mm. I can't imagine Janeway agreeing to these people coming in and giving and looking around snooping on board. It doesn't really seem like a, a Janeway thing to approve. It's also like, why? Why doesn't she just go, no, just fuck off? <laughs> yeah, I'm coming through. I've We're got just through space. It's not like they're doing anything. Yeah. We've got we've got a certain amount of torpedoes that we can't we can't get more of them, but they do seem to go on forever. We've got an infinite number of shuttlecraft, though. Yeah, that's true. And we'll, we'll build the Delta Flyer somehow, too. Yeah. Yeah. So nothing particularly sexy has happened so far. <laughs> yeah, so well done. Good choice, mate. Well, it's well he was playing it's music. He was playing, he was playing some uh, classical music at the beginning. He felt oh. that playing classical music made the crew less stressed during the uh, ship's inspection, you know which I think is pretty people. romantic. That's what I would do if I was trying to pick up the captain. Yeah. I've read your blog. Um, You've read my blog? <laughs> I know you moved. You those read my are, blog? <laughs> you found my blog? <laughs> those guys are wearing... I really, have a blog? <laughs> these guys are wearing really bad puffer jackets. Yeah. I mean, did they did they shop at the same place like that Neelix does? No, there's no. I can't see any couch fabric in this. Yeah. It looks pretty, pretty bleak black that they're wearing. It is, yeah. Mm, this guy's just set, started the sentence. I'm a reasonable man. It, it never really goes well beyond that when someone has. You don't have to announce you're a reasonable man if you are a reasonable man. He's not. No. He looks like a tool bag. Yes, yes, he does. Janeway's not impressed, so I don't think she's feeling the romance. No. Well, he said, "You've got a long trip through our space. Good friends, uh, you know. It, it's good to have friends." And he gave her the little winky wink. Oh, the winky mm. wink. Their ships look like uh, devil rays. Oh, de devil rays. Yeah, the thing that murdered your uh, animal hunt lover. Oh, yes, that's right. Yeah, oh, magic. Um, we're, stingray. We're, 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 we're,
we're Sting rematerializing rave. something. So we obviously were hiding something from these um, people that we don't like because they're not part of our crew and they're different. Who's that girl? I believe they're hiding anyone with telepathic uh, ability. Oh, so that would be two. A loud region of space, yeah. Uh, oh, so two no, uh, okay. I don't think we've still got Suter on board. I, I think he had telepathic abilities. Do we have that other Vulcan in engineering that um, got really horny uh, for Balana oh, in that episode we did? Yeah, here there he is. He's right there. I'm oh, here they are. They were all beaming they back. They also mm. appear to have some refugees. Clearly, these are the refugees that are uh, being hunted by uh, the whomevers. Including the Kid. No, that's the... There's Vorik. Oh, and we had a nice work, Harry, there from the captain, so he should be promoted by the end of this episode. Yeah, no. <laughs> Never. Don't spoil it. Don't spoil yeah. it. He's doing that's a good a, job. Some magnificent haircuts there. Yeah. They're going very slow through this space. As as you do. Yeah, if you're in a rush to get back, it's gonna if they've got to go through this space to get home. Maybe going around it at warp would have been quicker than going through impulse. I mean, I'm not one to question Janeway, but she has lost a lot more crew members than I have. Yeah, well, she's found a few too. True, true. And she's lost a few too. <laughs> What's this guy doing? Who are you seeing? Are you in are you in the medical bay? Yeah. He's just hanging around. Maybe there's no classical music in the medical bay. With his facial putty. They didn't, they, they weren't really doing, they weren't really going all out for the aliens in this episode. No, they're all uh, nose, nose aliens. Top yeah. Of nose. Yeah, the, like the dudes in makeup were like, yeah, we're doing noses today and nothing else. It's yeah, usually yeah. Uh, Voyage is traveling through divorce space where telepathy is illegal. The crew has a small group of telepaths and has offered them transport to a wormhole that will let them escape the sector uh, as Voyager continues on its way. And they're mm -hmm. hiding the refugees from the divorce. See, the, the, the weird Sorry. thing is like, how can, like, telepathy be illegal? It's like, you don't decide to have telepathy. You don't like... Well, in the United stuff. States, we have the legislature, the executive, and the judicial. Those are the three branches of government. Oh, well, thank you, civic boy. The legislature. <laughs> legislature creates laws. The uh, ed, ed, uh, executive uh, enforces those laws and the uh, judicial determines whether or not those laws are legal. That's um, literally the most boring thing I've ever heard. I'll edit it out. Don't worry about it. Um, <laughs> Neelix yeah. has got some apples in front of him or tomatoes. Oh, there we go. For the Neelix look, middle. Look like butts. They, oh, they and look like, uh, one up. They look like plums. Yeah. Hmm. Well, Janeway's pretty happy with that. We'll call it a plum. She does. Oh, seem... she even gave him a pat on the back. I've never seen that before. She's, oh, she's drinking she's all... broth. She's all touchy. And the kids in the background are drinking Romulan ale. Oh, wow. So yeah, yeah. Is. Those kids are getting drunk. Um, Mark, that judicial stuff you're talking about, we're actually talking about passing uh, laws in Australia soon. So nice. Passing laws? Yeah. So you're going to have laws in Australia? Yeah, they're talking about it. I don't know no. if that's heard. We don't have laws. We're lawless. Yeah. There's we're a lot of she'll be right, mate. We're Lucy lawless. Oh, hey, check this out, dudes. Yeah. I was watching an episode of The West Wing last night, Mark, speaking of your laws and shit, and guess who was on it? Keiko O'Brien. Keiko oh. O'Brien. <laughs> She's everywhere. I know. Is she angry? Uh, oh, no, here she... he is. Romancing she... the shit out of her now. Mm-hmm. Oh, it's all right, Ensign. That means get out because you don't want to watch this. This isn't going in the Ensign's log. Call me Kasha, please. 
There's a bit of suggestive eyebrow too. Yeah. Well, that's really really handsome. Mm. So this is the guy for Reese Witherspoon, is it? Yeah, I think his line from that movie is her pussy gets so wet. Wow. Which Ooh. is um that's not just when you're talking about a high school kid. I d I don't even know what that means. Yes, some some movies don't age as well as others. Back to the future well, I mean, aged very well. Contextually, it was it it's it works still oh, because good. it's still grotesquely inappropriate. Mm. Oh, it was, well, it was inappropriate then. It's inappropriate now. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Good. And um, oh, good. Mark, you've you've mentioned the movie a few times. Are you any way affiliated, or did you work on the movie election? <laughs> Election is my second or third favorite movie ever made of all time. Oh, well, what beats it? Star Trek Five? Well, wow. I don't count Star Treks in the. Oof. I don't count Star Treks or Galaxy Quest. Um, Fargo is number one. Sometimes Starship Troopers is number two. Oh, interesting. I watched Troopers last week. Ah. Yeah, it's so good. I, I don't know why I did. It, it was one of those channel surfing on, on, on the streams and, oh, Starship Troopers, I'll have a look at that. This guy's I, just said, you have no choice, Captain. You don't say that to Janeway. You'd never say that to Janeway. To be honest, I was just fast-forwarding to the shower scene. <laughs> Sonic shower? Oh, it was not Sonic. <laughs> and... Starship Troopers, Dina Meyer, who was in Star Trek Nemesis. Uh -huh. We know someone else that was in Nemesis, don't we? Yeah, fucking me, fucking me, I was in Nemesis, yeah, that's right, she was a fucking Romulan, yeah, I fucking moaned her, she was great, yeah. He didn't. <laughs> he didn't. Good narration, Hogan. <laughs> yeah. So, we're getting a bit of use of the Astrometrics Lab set today. Room, isn't it? He's like, earning her trust by giving them all of the information about his fleet so they can find so Voyager can find his people's ships and avoid an ambush in a nebula. Hmm. Not so, a coffee nebula, standard nebula. Oh right. <laughs> One of those boring ones. Um so, so many nebulas. This is kind of uh prime directive ish, right? Shouldn't well, we just be letting them be? Or have they sought asylum? They've sought asylum. The mm. refugees trying to get to safety. Hmm. Um, mid to late nineties, is this an allegory for anything political, particularly at the States at the time, do you think, Mark? Um I mean, you know, we're always writing laws here that are dumb. Oh, laws. You just love laws. <laughs> laws are dumb. I'm a libertarian. Stay out of, stay, keep the government out of my bedroom. Keep the government out of your pants. Keep it out of my wallet. Keep it out of my living room. Oh, I've got, a, I've got a tweet from at FBI. Hi, Mark. Hi, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Those guys, they love laws. Yeah, and they, they love our show. Do they? Yeah, they're a Patreon, lower level. Of course. Yeah. The mm. FBI is a patron. <laughs> <laughs> they would want to watch, mate. They would yeah, want to know what about. I think they're actually required to watch. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's true. Can you imagine there's somebody, there's somebody very lower level FBI agent who has to watch this? <laughs> like... Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's FBI lower decks. <laughs> <laughs> but at the moment he's like hey they mentioned me yes yeah i'm on podcast duty until i can get promoted <laughs> he's, gonna, he's gonna get scully's phone number all right so janeway's having a an intense conversation but the this way it's annoying the way it's shot you can't really tell who she's talking to at the moment but she, they're absolutely absolutely using that desk as a uh barrier between the two I don't like his shirt. Really? Nah. 
there's a bit of confidence. I think it's about one of the better Star Trek shirts ever because I've been I've been I'm in the middle of season five or the beginning of season five of the Next Generation. I've started rewatching it for the first time in a couple of years. Mm. I every time I rewatch it, those first three four seasons in particular, the clothes that everyone wears. Oh yeah, it's so weird. Yeah, <laughs> it's all the onesies. Everyone's in a onesie. Yeah, I know. It's like, and this is the weird thing about like when you have shows set in the future, the costume designers seem obsessed with redesigning clothes. And it's like, do you know what? Four hundred years from now, jeans and a t-shirt is still going to be cool. That's it's right. Like, it's not going to change. Yeah. It's literally not. I kind of change. agree. Jeans and a t-shirt will always be cool. It's like, and you know what? If I wake up in the morning like I had to today, because it's so fucking early, right? I'm going to wear tracksuit pants and a fleecy top because that was the first thing I found on the floor when I got up. I'm wearing the first thing I found on the floor right now, too. Oh, nice. So it's like we're brothers. Oh, sexy, mate. You're from the future, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's true. I planned this award winning ensemble that I'm wearing. Yeah, I can tell. Yeah. No, I, I'm actually I I can literally tell. Yeah, mm. it's it, you know it's I was once a model. Of, of what? Hair. Oh, hair. yeah. Is when, that you get my hair cut, when I was about seventeen, I had long hair at the time, and they said, "How about we don't cut your hair for six weeks, put eight different shades of blonde in it, and give you a free haircut?" I went, yeah, sure. Dude, I was a hair model. At the Australian National Hairdressing Championships. Unplanned hair model. <laughs> In 1994. Wow. An ear model or a hair model? Um, so my flatmate at the time was a hairdresser and she'd made the finals. And I was uh, to be the victim, basically. So, yes, I can relate to Isaac. I had to not cut my hair for about eight weeks. And then she dyed it a very ridiculous red colour. And um, then cut it on a stage. Yes, one was on the stage. So have you thought about washing out that ridiculous red in your hair or are you keeping it? I'm just happy I've still got the hair. Yeah, it's a good problem to have. Some yeah. of it. Yeah. All right, someone wearing another drab outfit is beamed on. Yeah, they beamed him on without his permission. What's, a good, what's going on with the back of that guy's head? Uh it's a head penis. <laughs> oh, <geez. laughs> mm. yeah, it's a dickhead. <laughs> it's a dickhead. Yeah. He's a dickhead. He's trying to call dickheads, mate. <laughs> Anyone ever tell you you look like a little penis with a hat on? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, fucking I. Oh, gee, shins. I was channeling a bit of shins then. <laughs> how, how could that happen? I, that's in, I, can't, I don't know. Sometimes, sometimes he gets a bit mad because he reckons I sound like him. Oh, I've, I've never heard it, mate. No. no. Oh, see, she's getting all flirty with with with, with dickhead. Oh. Oh, great. The wonders of live recording. I'm deaf in one ear and can't tell where that beeping's coming from. You've been beeping. Uh, your smoke alarm's gone off. <laughs> Every, everything's fine. Everything's some, fine. What happened? Did someone fart? Oh, I think one of my kids has set a, a stopwatch timer, which is great for in the middle of the night. That, that's hey, I forgot, I forgot to ask you at the top of this, how are you determining the 50 most romantic episodes uh, or sexiest not, episodes? Yeah, nothing to do with romance. Did, huh? <laughs> nothing to do with romance. <laughs> Good for sexiest. <laughs> the sexiest episodes. So, and how is this number fifty? Okay, so that's a good. It's a very good question, Mark. So very good question. I don't have an answer for. <laughs> you're a bit. In, he's a bit embarrassed, Mark. You see, what happens is he watches the episodes, and then sometimes when you get a bit aroused, the penis gets a bit hard. A bit, and then he gets a ruler and measures questions. It. Questions. What is a penis? Yeah, I know. Okay, I'm not sure. Shame this is audio only today, Andrew. You couldn't get the uh, YouTube stream working. 
<laughs> for, for my explanation. Um, so what I wanted is I wanted every franchise represented in my list. So that was one of my provisions. And um, I essentially had to get a list of – I used Google a bit on what are the sexiest episodes and through the synopsis and memory tried to rank them a bit. So – the ones that are closer to the top are very well known for their sexiness. But, yeah, the there were more episodes I wanted to fit into my list of 50 that I couldn't. Um, but, yeah, I, I, essentially it's going to be 50 weeks of Andrew going, is this the one with Kyle Riker and Pulaski? Mm. <laughs> I, I do. That's a sexy episode. I do, <laughs> like, um, I do like when Jane Away takes the jacket off. Mm. I mean... Mostly because it actually is one of the few representations that they have layered clothing in Star Trek. Yeah. Although in um, Picard, we've got those awesome jackets that we oh, all yeah, like. Those, those jackets. No, but nothing beats first season Enterprise. They had away team jackets and they mm. were two jackets. Like, they, oh, yeah, yeah. Know, like, they actually, it's the only time in Star Trek where someone recognizes that, you know what, if you go out of the house, you probably want to put a coat on. Hmm. Oh, you just said I haven't decided whether I like you at all. I have. Mm. He's going to try to kiss her, if I remember correctly. There's, ah. there's, there's no one there. How do you get How do you get the mess hole all to yourself like this? Well, it was originally, don't forget, the captain's mess, and Neelix converted it into a mess hall because, you know, he asked oh. for forgiveness, not for permission. Cause cool. mm -hmm. He did that a lot. He did that a lot. No one blinked an eye that he was dating a two-year-old. I did. Care. Yeah, <laughs> we, we did. No one on board cared. And I was like, ah. <laughs> it's the stuff of the cringe. Episode one. Yeah. It's all right. My father, <laughs> or I still don't like his shirt. Yeah. Oh, I only have a cup of tea, guys. Doesn't it look like the, the shirt's got little spaceships on it? Um, no, not really. No, you might be watching a different version. <laughs> Are they wearing party hats in your version? No. No, no. Oh, no. they're not. You must be watching a different one. Yeah. You're you watching are. a different version. No. Nah, Everyone's just... got a party hat in this one. You're wearing a party hat. You are a party hat. Your mom's a party hat. <laughs> Your mom's a party hat. Oh, there's a the laptop again. I don't know if you're a bit ahead of me. I don't have a laptop yet. Oh, it's okay. sitting in the mess hall with them. They're standing in front of the window looking at the lights. Uh, oh, I'm going to have seconds ahead. There they are. There it is. Hmm. How, uh, what, let's do a time code check. There's two laptops in this one. I'm 28 minutes and a half minutes in. Uh, I'm 28.50. I'm now 28 and a half. <laughs> They're sitting yeah. at the laptop. I've just got them at the laptop now. I've synchronized with you guys now. Cool. That was so, expense. I take it they're playing Minesweeper on the on the computer. No, no one plays Minesweeper. No one understands Minesweeper, but people played it. Oh, Janeway's lying back in a bit of a kind of way. Sultry. I guess that yeah, it's a bit of a sexy nebula. What um what 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 defines a sexy nebula? It's kind of got a lava lamp feel about it. Ah, I, I love a lamp. Mm. <laughs> mm. Oh, look at this! Reese Witherspoon to star in an election sequel movie at Paramount Plus. Oh, excellent! Can you get and, me on that set? Yeah, are you involved in it, Mark? She will reprise her highly ambitious election character, Tracy Flick, at Paramount Plus sequel. The 1999 film, uh, la, 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 la. Yeah, that's exciting. So this is filmed before election then, I think. This actually might have been around the same time. When was season five? I can tell you right now. Colonel. 1998. Hmm. Yeah, and yeah. 90. 
1998 was when this episode aired. So here in Australia at the time to watch Voyager, I had to rent these episodes on VHS, which only had two episodes at a time because mm-hmm. our TV had given up on Voyager by this time, but I was way too invested in it to give up on it myself. Was well, there whereas I was, um, I was sharing a house with a mate of mine who worked at a uh, like a local comic book shop that also sold videos and DVDs, and he used to steal the Star Trek videos and bring them home to our house, and we'd watch them, and then we'd cover them back in the plastic and put them back on the shelf in his shop. <laughs> Your mate, would he steal a car? Oh, yeah. He, he'd steal yeah, yeah, yeah. it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, like, um, basically, if you bought a Star Trek video from a comic shop in Hobart in the mid-90s, it was secondhand. I think there was also only one comic book shop in Hobart in the mid-90s. Oh, like, I don't want to be too specific, obviously. <laughs> no, no, I don't think anyone would better narrow it down, mate. If they, if they no, no, they no, wouldn't. The cool thing yeah. was we had two VCRs, so we, we, we'd dub them, we'd copy them. Oh. To a, it was great. <laughs> What's Chicote doing? Has Chicote done anything this week? No. Well, he's yeah. sitting there out of focus in the background right now. Yeah, he must have made a lot of money. Focus on that's a big face. That's a big close up on Tuvok, wasn't it? Hmm. In fact, this entire scene is all complete close ups. Hmm. They're going to grey mode. The rarely used grey mode. Or is that where they go black and white? Uh, that's Captain Proton, isn't it? That's on the holiday. Yes. Now, Seven didn't have the blue uniform much, did she? What colour do you associate with her? The silver one. Oh, oh that yeah. guy is, uh, isn't that guy uh, the builder of the weapon that's going to destroy Earth and Enterprise? Oh, Drig? Drigo? Oh. Drago, oh, uh, lead oh, refugee, uh, I think, is the actor who builds the weapon that is, is meant to destroy Earth. The Zindi weapon. Oh, the Zindi weapon. Yeah. yeah. Well, he's a he's a right bastard, then, isn't he? Oh, that helps. The Zindi built the <laughs> the weapon, <laughs> according to Google. <laughs> That's what happens if you Google. Yeah. Well, are we in her quarters now? Got a bonsai tree in the background. Mm. Now, this is a room which has paintings in it, but the usual Star Trek trope is to have paintings of the ship that you're on to remind you what ship you're on. But I couldn't actually make out what was in the, the frames. There's nothing there, in the frame. There were three picture frames kind of to the Janeway's right, but we're not looking at it from that perspective at the moment. See, the weird thing about this, the weird thing about like um, uh, having pictures on the wall is that you could just put a window on the wall and look at actual space. And be reminded that you're in space. In space, which would be cool. But like, not oh, all the rooms. She's revealing her attraction to him. Oh, she mentions Tchaikovsky. I wouldn't mind having someone around who loves Tchaikovsky, yeah. Yeah. Tchaikovsky hasn't been popular for a while. Swarovski. Mm. Remember, we we told Beethoven to roll over and tell Tchaikovsky the news. So he hasn't been relevant for a while. Oh, that, that upset Hogan. He's walked off. Isn't there an Australian movie about some guy who's obsessed with Tchaikovsky? Yeah, oh, pianist. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Shine, I think you're referring to. Uh, I'm, getting, I'm, yeah. I'm getting this guy. Oh. oh hi, cat. Uh, hi. They have cats Hello. in the future. I didn't know Hello. that. Future cat. <laughs> this is Stripey. Hello, Stripey. Is my TV too loud? Can you guys hear it? I, I have at times, but not enough to for it. <laughs> yeah. No. Um, also, don't tell me what to do. 
<laughs> oh, we're looking at a, another ship, are we? Um, oh. I just wanted to call out as well that I guess we have to give Stripey a grudge medal point for appearing on our show. Absolutely. Oh, there you go. Yeah. I forgot that we had to call out a bunch of points. We should have a little yeah. list. We have a, hey. a point card. There's Pashing. There's Pashing. Oh. Oh, she just got kissed by a person. Oh, and there she goes back at it. Oh, my. It's what about Mark? What about Mark? There are moments Mark? in time where it's like, it's important for us to remember that not only is Janeway a captain, but she's a woman. Mm. Oh, he's kissing her hand. Ooh. I'm going to save you. No, he's just going to get in that spaceship and touch himself. I think that ship is CG. <laughs> Do you reckon? Yeah. And by CG, you mean penis. <laughs> I mean, Janeway's not think, thinking about Mark and her dog anymore, is she? She's she's given up on that dream. I don't mean you, Mark. I mean, I do mean you, Mark. But the other Mark as well. So many Marks. Yeah. Janeway would have had more than one Mark on her list. And she would have checked it twice to see who's naughty and nice. Oh, there you go. Very good. Nice little fade there. Yeah. She's not happy. For someone who's just got a snog, she looks pretty angry, really. Maybe he wasn't that didn't have a good technique. Not like us hair models, mate. Ah, multiple techniques. <laughs> multiple means just had a line against, but they should raise shields. Mm. Fully functional. <laughs> oh, there's Harry. Is he still doing a good job? No. No. <laughs> he better stay instant then. He's not gonna do any job. What actual function does Harry Kim have? If he was on, say, Next Gen, who's his character? Is he? He's not Wesley. No. Is he? He's the dude that stands up the back that doesn't get a seat, but who isn't Wolf. That isn't Wolf, yeah. <laughs> Why did Wolf not get a seat? That is a bit odd. I think it's because Klingons don't deserve it. It's a bit of a racism allegory. Oh. Here it comes. Oh. What's happened on the desk? They're wearing those Tassie tuxedos. Oh, oh yeah, tuxedos. you're right. They do look like the phage scanners. Yeah, they do, don't they? Oh, they're lining up like Neelix is leaving again. One can only hope, I guess. <laughs> Why did Neelix leave? What did, what did he want? Why didn't he leave? leave? Oh, because they were going to go back to the Alpha Quadrant in about three episodes' time. Yeah. Or he fell in love. But it makes no sense. Oh, with with Chris, uh, Christie, Julianne Christie, who got Connor pregnant. Oh, <laughs> right. That's right. Only a few weeks later that would have been, too. Because season seven backed up to season one of Enterprise. Oh, yeah. It's probably mm. happened in months. Ship's probably, you know, giving Connor the side eye while, while with Neelix. I mean, well, if you, you were with Neelix, happens, you'd be doing the side. Who knows what happens on the Paramount lot? It's like mm. they wouldn't let us in, mate. That's why they. Oh, she up. thinks they're flirting. I know what happens on the Paramount lot. I can I know? I can I? Oh, bloody know what happens. <laughs> Everything happens. I fucking exploded. Yeah. Oh, jeez, shins on. Calm down, mate. Um, I think we've got confirmation of Jade, TV guy Grayson, and it's got Star Trek watching along with us today as well. So hello to those guys. Oh, hello. Oh, my other cat has a concern. Hang on. Oh, it's called jealousy. What's that, Mike? Am I going to have to give out more grudge metal points here? Yeah, come on. Are you bringing another animal into the show? Yep. This is. Um, Don't I get a grudge metal this, point? This is Thomas Wayne. Oh, and Thomas, Thomas Wayne is a main coon like grudge. Oh. Thomas He's Wayne not. does appear on set a lot for us. Yeah. Big fan of the show. Sorry, he wasn't happy. Oh, she's but she feels betrayed. We've all felt that. High school was tough. 
I'm feeling it now. Yeah. <laughs> Not betrayed, just I'm feeling it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I won't pan down the camera. Thanks, mate. But... Then, yeah, we've given out a little bit of more. Do we actually know the name of the character that Janeway Pashed? Um, Pashman? Pashman. Hmm. What is, the, what is your problem, cat? Okay, so two of my cats are having a conversation and it, they don't seem to like it. No. Yeah. I've got two more as well. Uh, so Janeway and Kashik have obvious chemistry from the nanosecond we see them together, according to yeah. Google. Kashik? Kashik. But that's the planet the Wookiees are from. You can't mention Wookiees on this podcast, mate. Oh, no. Talking about Wookiees. Hmm. You can talk about Whoopi. <laughs> Wookiee, Wookiee, Wookiee. <laughs> this is a lot of people on the bridge. I don't think I've seen this many people on the bridge since Seska took it over with the K's on. <laughs> they had no idea what they were doing. <laughs> They they actually handled the Voyager pretty well for a race that was set up to be very dumb and with no water. <laughs> and bad haircuts. They, they, they were wish version of Klingons, the Kazons. Yeah. They even begin with K. They were two new, they were two new Klingons. <laughs> Klingons with one. Oh, all those dangerous barrels. Look out, Worf. What did they shoot? What do you mean? You're shooting a wormhole. Oh, I wasn't no. quite where you were. <laughs> I've just seen them shoot with one of their replenishable for torpedoes. Should have detonated. So I guess we're giving a wharf medal to Voyager versus space. <laughs> yeah. Firing, firing a torpedo at nothing. Oh, what? Well, it's got to be. It's got to be the. Whatever they are, against the uh, the oh, mallet. We got we got some vegetables for the Neelix medal too. What was the salad in that barrel? It was fresh. I did not. Did, are, are you sure? It was green. Oh, we got <laughs> some. We got some more symphony music happening, and Jamie's like, "This isn't the time to get jiggy with it." It's always the time to get jiggy with it. Yeah, I reckon Janeway could um, handle the pressure of a bad situation. I she'd do she, a could, she could handle she, some jiggy. She'd do, she'd do what's the suggestion in Hey Jude. Take a sad song and make it better. Oh, you, is that... Oh, that wow. looked like uh, the leader Fat Joe. Um, Did you say they made they, a fat joke? No. Oh. No, they got away. So the refugees... Okay, so she he pretended to be in love with Janeway so that she would open up to him and he could catch her harboring fugitives. And she wanted to believe him, but didn't. But wanted to be safe instead. And now the refugees have escaped. And he's all angry. He is very angry. I hope he takes it out on Chakotay. Who's not even there? Hmm. Like, what other job does he have? Why is he, he the, most... the second most important member of the crew. Why is he not on the bridge? <laughs> Who, Chakotay? Yeah. yeah. I think we all know, though, that Tuvok's really the first officer. Yeah. 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 Now that I get Chakotay, I just feel like they didn't use him well. Yeah. It didn't help that the episodes where he was the main character weren't that interesting. They didn't give him great storylines. The setup's great that it, you know that he's marquee captain and people have inf everyone's infiltrated his crew except for Balana. Everyone else was <laughs> everyone else was a spy. No one was working for him. Yeah, Seska took that role a lot more seriously than oh, two. Just looking at him. Yeah. Longingly. 
what could have been is what's going through her mind right now. She's sad. That's she's wanted, she wanted to love. Wistful-looking. Yeah. yeah. And how am I going to explain it to Mark? If Here it is. Uh, yeah. yeah. That's pain. Right? Yeah. And you know what? Chikote wouldn't have been too happy about this romance either. Well, that's episode 50, guys. And now we have to move to the metals. This is going to be tough. It is going to be tough. It is. But we've got we've got the right man for the job. We've got Mark to, to do the Picard medal for the three best characters in this episode. So, Mark, who... Did anyone um, get your attention in this episode in the way that, uh, was it, what did I say his name? Kashik got Janeway's attention. Well, uh, <laughs> uh, I have to say Kashik is probably uh, three, it's three, two, one. So I'd say yeah. Kashik three. Yep. Yeah. Uh, it was a really fun episode. He was a fun character. Uh, actually, I really like this episode, and I like I like you know the repetitive nature of the ship being stopped over and over for these inspections, mm -hmm. and how he tried to trick Janeway into revealing what was going on, and the you know the fact that she gave him an opportunity. He it was really and plus then he went on to Election, which is one of the greatest movies ever made. Uh, but we're in love is what he says when he's being fired. <laughs> <laughs> that's what uh, your assistants say when they quit too is it oh i say yeah. quit when you force them to quit, <laughs> quit. Yes. you quit <laughs> uh, no yes, one sir. quits <laughs> no one quits from the show like your sound like that <laughs> uh so we've got uh him and then i think Chicote only had one or two lines in the whole episode, which is sort of fun. And uh, I don't know. This is hard. I have to, I'm going to give the two, I'm going to give to the, um, shoot. No. It's very hard. This is very hard. You should never give me the the Picard medal because I'm always like, is it funnier or is it better? It urge think, on the side of not being serious. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna go with um, Neelix because he gave children Romulan ale. Mm. Mm. Uh, yeah. Uh, though a close uh, second choice would have been Seven of Nine for just sort of being annoyed. She had no lines, but she was she played annoyed so well in the in the cargo bay at least twice. Mm -hmm. Um and then I'm going to have to give the the first one uh the I'm going to oh, Janeway. Janeway, Janeway is the best character in the episode. Uh it was a great performance. Uh you know, we this is the only one of what two or three times that she genuinely has a sort of romantic love mm -hmm. interest love moment that's real that's not dumb uh in this entire series so it, it was it was nice to see her heart get broken so sorry is joe Mike getting three or is she getting one she's getting three points yep uh neelix is getting two points and uh dude kashik, one. kashik is getting one point you know what? Well, I think this might be the first time Neelix has got points in the in the Picard medal. Really? Yeah. Well, has he ever given Romulan ale to children before? It's a very good point. See, it's there very you go. Point. Points. <laughs> two. <laughs> you get you not just one point, Neelix. No, two. And exactly. You're saying it's deserved, and I, I like the fact that you're having a swig straight after giving those votes because you're thinking of Neelix and what you would be doing with him if he was here at the time. Ethan yeah. Phillips couldn't make it today, but he, he did say to say hello to us all. Oh, did he? Well, I worked with, I got a chance to work with him um, in my, in the DGA and the Directors Guild of America training program right out of film school. I, w I worked on a movie that he was, uh, he played the father in a mm. Thanksgiving movie. Uh, and uh, we got to know each other pretty well. He's a really, he's a great guy. I was like, "Holy shit! You're you're Neelix." <laughs> <laughs> cool. 
<laughs> well, we'll swing to the Keiko now. Um, so with the technical difficulties at the start, Andrew, are you well versed enough to, to do the Keiko or would you like me to have a go at doing the three words? I'm, I'm doing nothing, mate. It's a very good point. Yeah. yeah. Okay. No. I can help you. I can help you with the with the Keiko. All right. Feel free to. Because I'm struggling. You're struggling? Yeah. Well, you got to give uh, the the sidekick to uh, Kashik. Kashik's sort of lieutenant. Mm, yeah. Uh, that was sort of, you know, cookie, cu cookie, cucker, cookie cutter character of the week. Sort of just yeah. generic, you know, militant rules, sort of shitty cop guy. Yeah. Uh, that guy was annoying as shit. And I don't know that, yeah. And he was also uh, able to, he also got sort of uh, 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 browbeat. He got whipped around a lot by his boss, who was constantly like belittling him and ordering him out of the room and shit like that. He was mm -hmm. always like, we should arrest these people. And he's like, I said, get out. And the guy would always like, oh, but we're supposed to follow the rules, but I'll leave. So it was kind <laughs> of, he was a wuss. I don't like that. So I would vote for him to get one. We'll give, we'll give him one. Or maybe two. Yeah, it, it that guy might have been Prax. Or it might have been Kerr. Oh, the sidekick? Yeah. Praxis? Yes, good point. Thank you, Andrew. That's all, that's all <laughs> I've got. I'm kind of... I'm, look, I'm, I'm wearing a Christmas hat on top of my Akubra. I, I noticed. Very yeah. sexy. Yeah. yeah. I know. Ladies, um, there's a queue. Form, form an orderly queue over there, ladies. Uh, what was this episode called? Yeah, we might just pivot to who gets two votes, if that's all right, Mark. <laughs> yeah, he can get two votes. What about the, the dickhead? That guy oh, deserves yeah. a vote because he did yeah. nothing. That's right. I mean, he was he, supposed to like build the whatever, but he was also just browbeat. He was forced to do something for people with more power than him. Yep. yep. Very well deserved vote. Yeah. Total, total nopper. Yep. So who was the uh, WVP? LVP? LVP. Least valuable what? person. LV four two. Oh, um, shit. Probably the leader of the for an episode about uh refugees and telepaths. Like Tuvok was had nothing hmm. of meaning to contribute, and the leader of the refugees contributed exactly nothing as well. He sort of just stood around and said it. Randy Goglesby is the guy who played. Kerr was the uh, head of the leader of the um, refugees. Uh, right. And also because he was the guy who built the weapon that was intended to destroy the Zindi weapon in Enterprise. Yeah. I think that, you know, that's he's worthless. So I'm a little bit confused who you've given the votes to. Can you summarize for me? I would go for, I don't know. Kerr. Kerr for... for an episode about a ref refugees uh, trying to escape, uh, they did exactly nothing. <laughs> I agree. Yeah. So we've got, who have we got? Kerr for three or Kerr for one? Kerr for one. He was the, I'm sorry, Kerr gets three points because he was the most worthless. Yep. And then two goes to Two goes to uh, another grudge, guys. Another grudge. No, another grudge. Look at that. <laughs> so three to Kurt, two for Dickhead. Three for Kerr, two for Prax, and one for Dickhead. Mm. Excellent. So given that this is the first episode to be released in January... These are the the leaders in our Keiko O'Brien meal for 2024. Oh, straight out of the gate. I wonder if they can hold their position for the year. 
Ooh, be tough one. It will be hard, won't it? <laughs> yeah, they will be tough. Well, this was our first live rewatch in our Fifty Shades of Trek program. Thanks for joining us for this one, Mark. Hope you had a lot oh, of fun. Oh, this is because... live. Oh shit, I forgot about that. <laughs> well, it's not sort of live. God oh, damn it! Next it's time we'll be prepared, so it's snappier. I was like, uh, uh, well, we could cut this. <laughs> <laughs> we don't cut anything. I'll, I'll cover it with musical stings. People won't notice the dead air. It'll be fine. There you go. Put some cartoon sound effects in it. Yeah. Yes. Like, <laughs> if anyone's actually ever listened to this podcast, you know we cut nothing. That's true. We not, we, not, not much. Because it's, not because it's all gold. Just because we can't be bothered. We did do one episode recently that after my edit, it was 20 minutes longer. Yes. <laughs> yes oh, so God. That. But it, I did put that Blame Daniel song in about 15 times. <laughs> <laughs> I have was... noticed in some of your edits, you you leave some stuff at the end. Yes. Uh, not the outtakes, but like it'll keep playing. Yep. And then suddenly there'll be like something that you cut out, just moved out of the way in the edit. Uh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, <laughs> where, where, yeah. The secret. Where should we start? start? Well, let's start with. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, you can you can cut things out, or you can just push them to the side. That's right. You know, and the real fans listen to the end of the show. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Are you calling me a real fan? <laughs> yeah, you're a real son. How dare you? Do you remember? Do 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 you you guys um remember when like some like CDs would have like 99 tracks of nothing at the end of the disc and then there'd be like the hidden song at yeah the end? that was like um, totally weird I remember Nirvana's In Utero had like yes. 23 minutes of quiet after yeah. all apologies yeah 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 and it's like weird as yeah the other um, <laughs> the other day so my son was talking about uh he's quite enjoying listening to um, Japanese rock music because he hears it on the anime shows that he watches on Crunchyroll, which is apparently a thing. And I said, oh, mate, I've got a whole heap of Japanese anime CDs that you can listen to. And I went and got them from, from the shelf and I gave them to him and he said, Dad, I literally have no way to listen to these things. <laughs> it's just like, what are you giving me? This, this, this weird old technology. What is this old thing? Yeah. And he's, he's, he's like, yeah, just take it back, mate. <laughs> well, next week we'll be up to episode 49 in Fifty Shades of Trek. I'm not going to tell you what episode, but I'm going to tell you it is from Enterprise. So yes, welcome during the week. That's that's the franchise we're going to be hitting next time. Ah. Yeah. Should we make a game? Let people guess which uh, Enterprise episode it's going to be? Yeah. Knowing that it's going to be one of the sexiest? Who gets so the sex? That narrows it down to about 94 episodes of Enterprise. Yeah. Oh, I see. Much. I see. I see. <laughs> You're saying Enterprise is the sexy Star Trek. Well, no, no other Star Trek needed that decontamination bay where you got to rub porno gel on fellow yeah. cast members. <laughs> and everybody yeah. wore underwear. Yeah. Like everyone. Yeah. That's weird. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Like we, and we, we might see, we might see we a podcast a, as well. When we do a podcast, I'm pretty sure I'm not wearing the same colour grudges as you are. Are we going to establish this? Actually, I'm, not I'm wearing, I'm wearing I'm black. black. I'm wearing black boxer briefs. I didn't need to know that. Yeah, Ever. this might be might, might be one of those bits that Mark wants me to splice and put at the end of the podcast. Yeah, I just don't. <laughs> I just there's a mental image there that I don't need to know. <laughs> you brought it up. I just yeah. Like, hey guys, just, what underwear are you wearing? Okay, you I figured the two of you were pussyfooting around. I'd just jump in the pool. Yep, that's it. Mm. I'm, I'm like, it's, oh, it's a bit chilly. <laughs> Mark's like, get a ball. <laughs> you really like, Mark, we're from Tasmania. It's a very shallow gene pool. That's nah. true, but it's also very close to Antarctica, so the water's always cold. Oh, there's a shrinkage. Mm, yes, we know about <laughs> shrinkage. <laughs> Shrink it. <laughs> well, we Americans, might Americans there, don't too. get it. Hello. Hello. Yeah. Oh, Shins, what did you think of Counterpoint? I thought it was shit. 
fucking stupid. Like you. You fucking Thanks, hands. Man. Yeah, okay, bye-bye. Jeez. Are you in a bad mood today? Bye, Shazan. Yeah, no, he's not talking anymore. He's in a really bad mood. That's okay. He should get some rest. Yeah. yeah. I think he needs to, I don't know, go to a room of mirrors, drop the togs, and take a good hard look at himself. Good advice. Mm. All right, boys, well, we might wrap it up there. Thank you very much for being part of this, and we'll do it again next time. Excellent. We're doing this next week. Is that when it's happening again? Why not? If, if you're free, I mean, it's going to be, what, if we did it this time next week, it's the weekend before Christmas kind of thing. So 